Hello and welcome to uh, this uh, video from the Ready for Pet uh, program. Uh, this, this particular module is titled Training and Education will be presented by Dr. Gary Heller. Thank you, Dr. Case. It's a great pleasure to be participating in this. Uh, from my own experience, I have uh, had the pleasure of working with over 25 laboratories to initiate a cardiovascular pet program. And training and education is actually a key component uh, to the success of a high quality laboratory. I'd like to go through some of the uh, components of uh, this specific program. Uh, first off, I think we need to understand that there are important advantages to cardiovascular pet, which is why people are getting into it. Just briefly, because of high diagnostic accuracy, which is superior to many other modalities. Attenuation correction, which is done on all studies, which provides the opportunity of much fewer false positive studies. The protocols for both rubidium and ammonia are shortened, and particularly with rubidium, the acquisition is during hyperemia. So this has implications for not only interpretation, but uh, understanding of the imaging results. And finally, myocardial blood flow assessment is now a key component to any cardiovascular PET program initiated um, in, the, in the present era. The result of this is more accurate results with greater confidence and less unnecessary downstream testing. As I said before, the success of a program is based upon the education of the groups that are most involved. First off, the cardiologists in the group that is starting this program um, need to understand what they're getting into, if you want to call it that, as well as the referring healthcare providers, uh, because they are the ones ordering the test and receiving the results. Administration, I won't speak too much on, but obviously, uh, they need to understand the nuances of ordering and billing. And finally, the last two groups that are very important are both technologists and readers. I want to dovetail into the technologists because that's basically where it starts. Let's remember that this is all new equipment to most of the technologists. There are new protocols, new tracers, and unlike SPECT, it's very time dependent. So this requires a certain amount of training in order to make it successful. There's camera training, there's tra tracer protocols, either with rubidium or ammonia. There's new processing methods that have to be understood and as well as CT positioning for both attenuation correction and calcium evaluation. So while we've eliminated most of attenuation artifact, there are two new types of artifacts that can pop up with uh, pet imaging. One is misregistration, uh, and the other is a motion artifact. I won't go into great detail, but it's very important for technologists to understand both of these. And finally, myocardial blood flow. I think myocardial blood flow is very different from what technologists are used to in terms of perfusion. And my own recommendation is to begin blood flow uh, at a later date once people understand and appreciate perfusion. Physician readers are also very important. Most of the physicians that we work with have already been doing SPECT imaging, but all of those things that I just outlined mean that the interpretation of PET is somewhat different. So I just want to go through a few of these things. One is better image quality, higher accuracy as a result of that, as well as tracer technology, attenuation correction, which virtually eliminates attenuation artifact, and remember requiring data during hyperemia. So TID has a different impact as well as ejection fraction, which is why we acquire data at both rest and stress for all cardiac pet studies. 
And then moving on to some of the artifact is understanding motion and misregistration, again, beyond the purpose of uh, this presentation. The bottom line of this is that you really should think about reading for sensitivity rather than specificity. In other words, once you've excluded motion artifact and misregistration, then a defect that is there is much more likely to be real and should be considered abnormal, which is a different mindset from reading PET studies. As with the technologists, uh, myocardial blood flow is a very new concept to most of the people going into cardiac PET. As I mentioned before, I think it's important to do this several months after the perfusion has been initiated in a given laboratory because it is relatively complex and needs a greater understanding. And then finally, most are now doing PET-CT and that affords the possibility of evaluating calcium either qualitatively or quantitatively. And in most laboratories I work with, this falls to the interpreting healthcare provider and uh, physician. The final group are healthcare providers and administration that I mentioned earlier. With regards to administration, it's very important to set up scheduling uh, correctly and to get them to understand the new billing that goes along with cardiovascular pattern. It's quite complicated, but um, once they understand it, it uh, works out pretty well. The other healthcare providers are also very important, both cardiologists in the group, as well as those internal medicine, so on and so forth, who are not part of the cardiology group. I say this because those are the ones who are ordering the test. They need to understand uh, what blood flow is all about. They need to understand when to order a cardiovascular PET study, both in terms of perfusion, and in some laboratories that are using FDG imaging, those indications as well. So this education is very important, even for those who are not reading. The final aspect of that is, what do you do with the results? And this has to do with downstream testing, such as cardiac catheterization and stand or CTA, also correlating perfusion with blood flow and how that changes the recommendations for both therapies as well as downstream testing. And finally, how calcium changes the story, particularly in patients with no known coronary disease. So all of these constituencies are very important for education. With that, I'm going to stop and uh, turn it back over to Dr. Case. Yeah, well, gr great presentation, Dr. Heller. I have a couple of quick questions I'm sure people would like to know. Where do you think would be a great resource uh, for people who are trying to get that education um, to go? Oh, um, yeah, actually, it's a very good question. And there's uh, the American Society of Nuclear Cardiology has actually set up an entire list of programs to get people to where they need to be. One is physician interpretation, which is generally over a weekend, but it covers uh, many aspects of, um, of perfusion, blood flow, and FDG imaging. Um, the second is for technologists, again, a weekend program, which really is a terrific opportunity to get into all of the different aspects of cardiovascular PET. And finally, a third program on hybrid imaging, as uh, I'm sure you were, Dr. Case, the interpretation of the non-cardiac structures is an important aspect, and the American Society of Nuclear Cardiology provides interpretation of these non-cardiac structures for those cardiologists interested in doing that on their own. So those are great resources. There are also guidelines 
uh, both on blood flow and when to order PET that are on the ASIC website. Yes. I, I don't think, I'm sorry, just one more mm -hmm. to put a plug in is that uh, there's now a, on the ASIC website, there's a case a month on cardiovascular PET, which are basically in the trenches examples. And there's now about two years worth of data and uh, very worthwhile going to that website. Yeah. Now I know that uh, you do a lot of uh, work directly um, with practitioners. What do you think the value is and, and the importance of going directly on site as opposed to using some of these online resources, bringing an expert in to help uh, uh, train you beyond say what you would get with, um, with just uh, the, uh, the vendors, um, uh, field service engineer, whoever else is training on how to, uh, how to use the camera. Um, well, I can tell you two things. One is my own experiences when I started my PET program, uh, I was on the phone actually with you and Dr. Bateman, even though I understood PET, uh, there's all of these things that come up. And I think having somebody in the background who is potentially on site for a couple of days uh, is very valuable. And also if they can provide uh, peer review evaluation for a period of time, like a month or so, uh, that's also extremely valuable. Remember that the camera companies are teaching the technologists only a limited amount. The, uh, and the same thing is true with the tracer companies. And so all of the nuances of blood flow, perfusion, et cetera, fall to and sort of through the cracks as it were. And I think uh, going to these programs are helpful, but uh, having somebody in the background I think is extremely valuable. Yeah. Uh, one last thing. Uh, you said something kind of curious. I want to, I, um, and I'm a believer in this as well, uh, about not necessarily starting perfusion and blood flow on the same day for, uh, for an institution just jumping into PET. Maybe you could dive down into uh, why you think that's so important. Yeah, that's a great question. And this is this is my philosophy and the groups that I work with have actually embraced this. The issue is that moving from spec to PET just with perfusion alone is a sea change in terms of everything I outlined, such as new camera, new processing, new uh, tracer. And it's a lot for both the technologists and the physicians to wrap their arms around. So what I found is getting them up to speed on perfusion and wall motion, et cetera, before embarking on blood flow is a pretty reasonable strategy because you can tend to get overwhelmed. And um, uh, I think it works to do it in a stage performance. And again, blood flow, is not a concept that uh, neither technologists or physicians appreciate from the spec world. And so it requires a, a great deal of understanding. I think a stage approach works very well. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I, I completely agree with that, um, especially on the technologist side where there's so much to learn on day one, trying to put blood flow uh, in there is, is um, is, is just one concept too many on, on making this transition. Yeah, and that's been my experience as well. All right, great presentation. Thank you, Dr. Heller. Do you Thank have you any final comments? comments? No, I would just say this is a great adventure and um, very worthwhile doing. And, and uh, nobody turns back from once they've started doing that and particularly with blood flow. Thank you.